How's it going, YouTube? Mike here. I uh, hope you guys are having a, a good day. Uh, today I wanted to do a flight update. I'll uh, give you guys an update on my flight training so far. Um, but I decided to talk about something different. Uh, something more in recent news. Uh, it is relating to aviation. Uh, so yesterday there was another plane crash out here in Southern California and you know, as a, as a pilot in training, it's always just disheartening to, to read about another pilot uh, losing their lives, uh, doing something that we all enjoy to do. So, and this one was even much closer to me. Uh, and it was closer to where I work and all that. But anyway, but I decided to, to give my my comments on, on plane crashes and sort of how it affects the psyche of other pilots, uh, especially new pilots like myself. Uh, for me, you know, for one, the advantage, I wouldn't say advantage because it is a sad situation, but, you know, with every uh, crash or incident that happens, uh, there's a learning experience. You know, as a pilot, you should take away from what other people may have done wrong because a lot of plane crashes and accidents uh, are, are due to, you know, human error for the most part. A lot of them are due to human error. And sometimes you have, you have things that happens that may be out of your control. But a lot of times you do have some control, you know, has to your fate. But anyway, um, the recent one that happened here was, you know, it was a light sport uh, plane. And the, the pilot was practicing touch and goes, I believe. Um, and sadly, uh, uh, I think when he touched down and then he tried to go up again, and I think something was up with the engine. And uh, basically it was like an engine failure after, right after takeoff, which is always a bad thing. Um, I don't know the full story yet, but that's what's been reported so far. But anyway, this guy, you know, he uh, had some engine problems when he tried to go up again and the plane would not climb. Uh, so the plane crashed nearby the, the runway and uh, the pilot didn't make it. So, you know, one thing I would take away from that is, and it's ironic because uh, more recently I've been studying for my check ride and what I, some of the stuff I read recently is how your engine, especially if you're flying a, a piston engine, a uh, small airplane, your engine gets overworked uh, in hot weather. And if you know anything right now, it's the summertime. And if you're flying a single engine airplane, you know that your, your engine is being overworked, especially on really hot days. Um, so, and also they always advise you to always point the, uh, whenever you're, you're taxiing, or whatever have you or doing a run-up it's best to always point the the engine to the wind so you know you can cool the engine down a little bit um, but one main thing that I take away from what happened yesterday is that I probably would stay away from touch and goes in a hot weather because when you think about it think about it for a second like a touch and go is you you're you're probably you're you're coming towards land and you probably already killed the power or almost killed the power and then you put the power back to full force uh to be able to go back up and you know going back and forth like that you know you're working your engine like crazy um and again i don't know what specifically happened to the to the uh aircraft that crashed yesterday but they just said it was an engine problem so and this is this is just my guess and my personal takeaway from it i probably would not be doing touch and goes on a hot day uh because things can go wrong uh, and rest in peace to to the pilot that that didn't make it yesterday so that's one but even more recently uh, i read another story uh another crash that happened where it was a student pilot um who was he was I believe he was more in his early stage, like right after soloing. So he, this guy is post solo, and I read that um, his parents or his family are suing the the flight school for the fatal crash. And what happened was basically um, he ran out of fuel on takeoff. Uh, so when I read this story, you know, 
you know, obviously a part of me, my heart goes out to the to the young man that lost his life. But as pilot in command, you're always, always responsible for the airplane that you're flying. And especially things like fuel. You know, these are things you can control. So my takeaway from that, honestly, since I read that article and I read that story, I've always made sure to, to check my fuel, like double check my fuel, double check my fuel gauge. And if I'm traveling, if I'm going from one airport, if I'm going from my home airport to a different destination, I always fill up the tank. Even if I had, if I had sufficient uh, fuel in my gas tank, I will still get it to the to the full tank. So that's that's sort of been my uh, extra safety net. So since I read that story, you know, I always make sure I fill up if I'm flying to a different destination. And the rule of thumb, and the rule of thumb is that. If you're flying uh, VFR during the day, you should have enough fuel to get you to your destination airport or your first stop. And, and you should have another 30 minutes of fuel available on board. So, and that's a good rule, obviously. Uh, but for me, now when I do my pre-flight, I'm double checking that fuel. I, when I check the engine gauge and it tells me I have, say, 20 gallons on each tank or 20 gallons altogether, and say I'm just going around the pattern. If I'm going around the pattern, for the most part, I only need about five gallons or 10 gallons of gas. Um, but whenever I do my fuel sump or I open that uh, fuel cap, I'm bouncing that wing just to hear the sound of the fuel in there because I've actually had a situation where early in my training, the airplane that we were flying uh, at one point, the fuel gauge was bad. So the reading that I was that you would get from the fuel gauge was actually wrong. So for me, a way to go around that is actually check and see if there's actually fuel in those uh, tanks. So whenever I'm, I'm opening that gas cap, I'm looking in and I'm trying to listen and I'll like push down a little bit on the on the wing and make sure there is fuel there. Um, so. That was my takeaway from that. Always, always make sure you have enough fuel to go. That's, if you use your checklist, that's part of your pre-flight. Um, so again, you know, rest in peace to, to the kid that, that lost his life, but that was his responsibility to check uh, the amount of fuel that he had on, you know, before he took off with that airplane. And again, it's so sad because he had just solo. And on that day, he was just trying to go around the pattern. He wasn't trying to do any crazy missions or anything like that. Um, so yeah, and the third one uh, that also happened recently was the, the SR-20 that crashed in Houston. Um, you know, I, believe it or not, before I started my flight training, uh, the Cirrus brand, uh, was one of the airplanes that got me into wanting to become a pilot because you know they, they have such great marketing that it makes you want to fly you know i've always had the passion to fly but whenever i would watch videos of the cirrus uh brand it encouraged me more but since i've been flying you know i keep a lot of crashes happen with this airplane um cirrus that is and this is nothing against the the cirrus brand itself but I think it's something more to be to be concerned about as to the pilot, the people flying this airplane. Usually, it's you know new money, more money than than skills. I would say uh, because the Cirrus is a high performance airplane, and the more I read about crashes in a Cirrus, I, I'm like, okay, if you're gonna be flying, you probably want to take your time and not just go from you know a normal airplane. Uh, to a high performance um and when you read the stories of you know the serious crashes uh, a lot of this stuff can could have been avoided but then again you're not you're not the pilot at the time so if it god forbid if it happened to you there's no saying what you would do but on the outside when you think about it a lot of this stuff could have been avoided but anyway back to the to the story the 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 sr 2020 that crashed in houston um, so I read the ATC, first I read the story, then I went ahead and tried to listen to the, to the ATC radio to see what happened here. So this lady, 
Uh, it was it was a lady and she had her husband and her brother-in-law as a passenger in the airplane and they were coming into land at a, what seemed to be a very very busy airport okay and ATC was when you listen to the to the audio you you can come to your own conclusion but the conclusions I came to was one the fact that she complied with everything ATC said even though as a pilot, you're thinking to yourself, this is probably not the best idea. So at one point, I, I, I heard when ATC asked her, um, they asked her if she wanted to, um, if she wanted to land following a 737. Okay, now, you're, you're a small airplane, uh, and you know that the rule of thumb is you want to stay away from big jets, especially during landing, you know. Even if you land, if, you, if you're coming in safe, there's other stuff that you need to worry about, like wake turbulence and things like that. And at one point, ATC tells her, hey, are you okay with, you know, following this 737 that's about to land? And she says, yes. And my initial reaction would have been negative. Hell no. You know, I'd rather go around. And you can tell, if you listen to the, to the ATC, you can tell that she was somewhat getting frustrated and impatient you know because she had gone around like three or four times so at one point she was you can tell that she was already frustrated and all she wanted to do was just calm down right so um sorry i'm trying to look for parking here see if i can squeeze it in in one of these uh two spaces here but anyway, uh, so at one point, all she wanted to do was calm down, and so I, I figured it was a it was a la it was bad judgment when they asked her if she wanted to follow a big jet, and she said yes. And I think that could have been the 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 spiral end for that flight, which was a bad decision first. And then you could also hear when ATC would say things like, "I need you to make it tight for me, like make a tight turn for me." And you're just like, okay, if ATC tells me to make my turns tighter, I'm probably not going to comply. Again, my rule of thumb is whenever, a and this was said to me in the beginning of my training, like whenever ATC tells you to do something and you question it in the back of your mind, especially when you're a new pilot, the best answer to probably tell them is maybe extend. You could, if you're on downwind, for example, you could probably extend downwind or do something else. So when ATC tells you to follow a big jet and then after that they tell you to uh to make the turn starter to make your you know turn starter to come in and you comply you know to me you're already compromising your own safety at that point and what ended up happening was um i believe either on 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 base uh, good um on base on on base turn or final turn she uh she stalled the airplane and the airplane went spinning and that was it so uh three things i took away from that uh crash is one always plan your flight ahead as a new pilot you do not want to go into a busy airport um two when ATC tells you, you know, remember that ATC are there to, to serve you, not the other way around. And if they tell you something that possibly can compromise your own safety, it's best to just say no or I'll go around or do something else. Um, and three, you know, you probably want to be patient when you're advancing from one airplane to another. As a new pilot, I would say take your time uh, when you're going from a trainer to, say, a high performance like a Cirrus because those, those airplanes are much faster and they're less forgiven when you make a mistake so you know these are the things that i thought about but anyway i've got to go right now clearly i'm, I'm here uh, but i'll talk to you guys later let me know what you think you know i know there's some pilots who follow me um but let me know what your thoughts are on you know some of these crashes and let me know what you take away from them but this is this is my piece uh, i hope you guys liked it and enjoyed the video please leave your comments and thank you for everyone who supported me uh and hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button i'll catch up with you guys later okay take care bye